close getting into the corner. This all started way back in turn four. These guys battling in the pack for position. The one is Yaley, the 88 Keselowski, the 42 of Almendinger. I'm a 88 car Keselowski, it's a big run off of turn four. It's a big drag race down into turn one. Three wide, one four wide, and that's not what you want to do. And he gets tagged in the right rear quarter panel. Almendinger does, and Keselowski's like, where did this come from? I didn't even see that one coming. There was, that was just one freak accident in the one car. Got in the back of that, and that's what started the whole thing. Yeah, Brad Keselowski really got blindsided. He didn't see this coming at all. You see this 42 car gets sideways, gets into the right rear quarter panel, and then this 88 car just slams the wall, went up in the air. Guys, I don't know if I've seen a harder wreck before going into turn one of my life. Thing on fire. Again, the soft wall that NASCAR's got at most all these racetracks really held up, and it was a great thing. And we, we saw Brad get out of the car. That's great, and boy, I'll tell you what, that reminds me of some bad accidents we've seen in this sport in the past. But thank gosh the kid walked away. Terrible it's, impact. Gives you a sense of how fast these cars are going. Entering this corner right here, you see that car just hit the wall, get up in the air. These cars are going over 200 miles an hour getting into that corner. Actually danced on the hood of the 42 cars, what kept it up in the air, and Keselowski's car was along that right rear tire along the soft wall. That's safe for Barry, then came back down to rest there. It's a scary crash, guys. I hate to say things like this, but it reminds me of a long time ago when Dale Sr. hit the wall at Daytona, a hard impact like that. And this is Dale Jr.'s car. But it looks like everybody's okay. Brad's shooken up pretty bad. Brad Keselowski uh, awake enough to be able to put the window net down and talk to the safety crews there. And we certainly are not going to speculate because uh, they're being very ginger with his feet and legs because you see how the front of the car with that kind of impact, it, as you said, Andy, almost 200 miles per hour. Uh, they have a safety cage in there, but obviously his foot was there on the pedals in, underneath in the cockpit. Let's watch and listen here to what happened just a moment ago. Guys, let me remind you again, that was the fastest part of the racetrack going into turn one, close to 200 miles per hour, head on into the wall, and the kid gets out of the car and walks away. 23-year-old Brad Keselowski coming off his career best finish just a week ago at Bristol, Tennessee, when he drove from the middle of the pack all the way to get a seventh place finish. So excited, so high on the opportunity here that he had driving for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jerry, I don't want to speculate, but he, he's definitely in pain. He can tell that something's hurting him. And he hit, I've, uh, it's hard to believe a man can walk away from impact like that. He looks like he's favoring one of his legs. Maybe something, who knows. I mean, you got that kind of damage right there on that left front. It's right where the driver's legs and all that is. And you, you see the damage there. So could have just banged his, le you know, his legs against some of the pedals or his steering column. And uh, they just want to make sure they take good care of him. Yeah, they get him the care definitely, maybe a big bruise or something like that because an impact like can definitely, it can definitely hurt your leg and not break your leg, Jack. Kevin Moss, you saw a moment ago, had the red flag out. The cars have been stopped on the racetrack. We will get you an update as soon as we can. On Brad Keselowski, again, a, a violent impact here that has produced a caution for the second time tonight. This coming out on lap 67 in turn one. 42 car up underneath the 88 of Keselowski comes down off the barrier and comes to rest. Back in just a moment. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Back at California Speedway, where we are under a red flag condition after 69 of 150 laps. The Camping World 300 presented by RVs.com. We're continuing to pick up the cars that were involved in a grinding crash here on lap 67. There is the 88 car. Car owned by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brad Keselowski. There's the 42 of A.J. Allmendinger. He was involved, the one of J.J. Yaley and the zero of Eric McClure.
Here's the incident. Now watch the speed here in the 88 car. Watch as they go into corner over 185 miles an hour. You see over 100, almost 190 miles an hour. It's blindsided by this 42 car. Car on its side up on the wall, still going upon impact right at 100 miles an hour as it came across the hood of Almendinger's Dodge. And now comes back down across the racetrack. Another look looking across turn two. You can see just how little impact it takes. These cars just barely touch to get in that corner. And then when they start losing control, then you have these kinds of things can happen at these kind of speeds. Like, uh, think hitting that wall when it was concrete, though. I mean, this soft wall has just been so good for these drivers and everybody. I mean, they tell us that it takes close to 40% of the impact out of a driver's body when he hits the wall. And for sure, Brad really tested that wall that time. That was an incredible impact. And the wall looks like it's still in pretty decent shape. There is the safer barrier we're talking about, and it's probably one of the uh, greatest innovations that come along in NASCAR. They had the fuel cell, they've had the fire suit, the window net, all the things, the seat belts, the, the five-point harnesses, all the things that have been made as safety features in NASCAR racing that have been actually moved on to the passenger cars, but that safer barrier probably is the biggest innovation to come along in two decades. It definitely is, Jerry. A lot of people talked about, you know, what can you do to make these cars safer? And boy, the softball helped everything. While we're under a red flag, let's see if we can visit with our in-race reporter, Jimmy Johnson, whose car number 48 currently sits fourth uh, in line. Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Guys, what could have happened right now is they might have turned the radio off to save the battery power on the radio. A lot of times, crew chiefs and drivers will talk if it's an extended red flag and say, look, Jimmy, turn the battery off on the radio. We don't want it to go dead. And really smart thing if he's done that right now because we don't know how long this red flag is going to last at the moment. Chad Walter, the crew chief, they're talking to the crews, and that is a very good point. As a pit reporter for many years, I've heard him say, okay, we're going to turn the radios off. And when you're told to fire the engines to roll off, then you turn them back on to try to save the battery. Under red flag cleanup continues here. The color scheme, by the way, on the 88 car was uh, to honor the Seabees, the Navy's construction battalion. There is the 42 car. A.J. Allmendinger making his debut in the NASCAR Bush Series and the zero NASCAR Bush Series veteran Eric McClure, as well as the one J.J. Yaley. Back with more in just a moment. Under a red flag, and now NASCAR is allowing the drivers to climb out of the cars because of the heat we have had here today. If you just joined our coverage, we had air temperatures approaching 105 degrees, track temperature over 140 at midday. It has cooled off, if you can call the mid-90s cool. These drivers have been inside these cars, and now they're allowing a crew member, one crew member per car to go to bring water to service a driver. Brian Vickers, they're talking with Jeff Burton, having climbed out of the car. Denny Hamlin talking to one of his crew members. And these cars are so hot inside, especially when they stop, turn the engines off, there's no airflow. They're like a sauna inside. And so NASCAR did the smart thing by letting these drivers get out of those real boiling hot cars and cool off a little bit. Because here in California, it's still hot out, close to 90 degrees. We are under the red flag because of the repairs that are taking place now to the safer bury the soft wall up there in the turn where the impact involving four cars has produced the second caution flag of the night. Heavy impact on lap 67. Again, the four cars involved, the zero of Eric McClure, the one of J.J. Yaley, the 42 of A.J. Allmendinger, and, of course, the 88, uh, the most serious impact uh, was taken by the 88 car, Brad Keselowski. This is the accident on lap 67. Coming down through the trioval area, entering turn one. Watch the, the contact. Four wide getting into turn one. Guys, just a tough accident right there. Just amazing. The soft wall, we talked about it. How good the soft wall stood up. You saw him a little while ago, just welding on it just a little bit. 
Still had a great shape. And NASCAR's been through enough accidents right now with the soft. Well, they know if the welds are broken at all, they're going to red flag it and fix it. And that's what they're doing right now. But the thing did just an incredible job holding up. Let's take a look at the speeds here getting into turn one. 185. Close to 190, pushing 190 right before he starts getting out of the throttle. A lot of speed. He doesn't see the 42 car coming and gets him in the right rear quarter panel. And look how fast the car starts slowing down when it gets a wall. Almost a 40 mile an hour drop right on the impact. These soft walls have really helped a lot as far as taking the energy out of these crashes. But they are a little fragile, so to speak. They have to go back and fix them when they when they hit them really hard. Sometimes it'll, it's made out of aluminum. It's like a tubing, and uh, they got that fire styrofoam behind them. But they can go back in there and just reweld that stuff and put, replace some of that foam and make it just as good as new. Brad Keselowski in the 88, making only his 19th start in the NASCAR Bush Series, his sixth of the year in the 88 car, the JR Motorsports, owned by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Information we are getting now from NASCAR is that Brad Keselowski is awake and alert, and he's going to be flown out for further evaluation, x-rays. But uh, good news, Brad Keselowski, he was awake and alert in the car. We saw him put the window net down. The 42 car, A.J. Allmendinger, has been checked out and released at the infield care center. 